and your hyperspace technology and your advanced tunnels with Mac 2 uh, super trains and your underground cities are so secure while we're frying and we're hitting with tsunamis and global earth changes, they'll all be entombed in their rock graves deep in the earth in the bowels of hell. That's their future. So don't think you can hide yourself. The only thing that will save you won't be your guns, it won't be your bad attitude, it won't be your bullets or your physical prowess, it'll be your spirit. And if your spirit tells you to go to the left and you want to go to the right, you better listen to your spirit. And you better do a lot of praying, people, because if you don't become centered, and that means not me telling you what to do, but you finding out what your God wants you to do. It says to those who are going to die by the sword, they will die. And to those who are to, to, to be imprisoned, to those who are going to be martyred, and there's going to be a lot of martyrs, they're going to be trying to tell the others, this is what's coming. Because we are not years, we are months away from catastrophe. Look at this. Climate shift, mass species extinctions, geopolitical collisions of empires of total domination, invasions of consciousness. This is what we're facing. When we're talking about this tonight. We're talking about them literally invading the cortex of the human mind. The vertical rise of technologies they call the singularity. The post-human, transhuman species, they literally want to replace us. People think, well, I'm so good. I don't care if you're a billionaire. Do you have an IQ of 20 billion? Do you have a mind that is now meshed with a supercomputer array that can know everything about everything that goes on the planet? Do you have a lifespan of 20,000 years? Can you travel across the galaxy and advance technology with other civilizations? Well, I don't think so. So therefore, if you don't recognize what you are as a spirit being first, our civilization will soon end because we will not join the galactic if you want to call it civilizations. We are in an infant culture about to learn to walk and they're looking and say, look, look, he's going to walk. No, no. Oh, he's going to fall down the well. Are we going to walk or are we going to fall down the well? And it's all dependent on these questions. <clears throat> what evidence supports that we are not alone? Every religious book has talked about the seers or the watchers. I call them long-standing, intelligent, foundational entities. They call them the Ben Elohim in the Bible. Suppressed NASA, SETI, Vatican telescope evidence, all kinds of evidence that we have not only at higher dimensional beings that are astral, we call them demonic, whatever you want to call them, but there are beings in all kinds of civilizations across our galaxy and our cosmos and universe, not only from somewhere, but from some when. And that may be from the past, present, or future. We should not limit ourselves and our minds to understanding the nature of our universe because those who do not know as we cross the nexus, not asking these questions is a formula for death. Um, so it's not an optional thing. What evidence supports that we are not alone in the universe? Well, this is like uh, the original list of the Majestic Twelve. And I have people, I mean, I won't go too far down the rabbit trail tonight, but I want people to understand that I have people that want to talk, but they say they don't want to destroy everybody's religion by telling them really what's going on when they go to deep underground military bases. They don't want to really destroy and terrify people to let them know that they've actually been trading human flesh and why hundreds of thousands and millions of people disappear every year from Eastern European and America and elsewhere in the world and South America disappear into underground facilities, off-world bases and other places for experimentations, genetic engineering, and as human veal. They need to know that a lot of this technology and a lot of the evil, it sounds occult because it was. These entities, if you look at the, if you want to call it renditions of the, where people disappeared, so-called taken away by ETs, uh, in, in converse, converse to... Uh, Mr. Greer, Dr. Greer, they're not all nice. There's nice ones, and there's not so nice, and then there's really damn nasty. And you need to know that we need to be a little bit more discerning. It's like going down to South Central LA. I'm sure you wouldn't go there unless you knew what you were doing. The Thule Society and these people channeled, and again, I've, I've mentioned this before, and there's various individuals that are doing things that I consider very damn dangerous such as people like Dr. Fred Bell. And he opened up some astral gates using advanced scalar and sacred geometry. These are dangerous. If you play with fire, 
you're going to open up rents. And that's what they did when they did the Philadelphia experiment. That's what they did when the Nazis opened up these astral gates and they let these astral vultures and, 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 and parasites come through this gate. Most of the technology that the Nazis got was through channeling. It's not all a good thing. You should be aware that when you're playing with fire, you may well get turned into a cinder. Okay? So they were seeking stargates. In fact, part of the reason why they invaded Iraq was they were looking for the ancient stargate that was actually at the ancient <laughs> museum in Iraq. And there's another stargate that's in Iran, which is one of the reasons why they want to get to Iran, because there's another stargate there. They understand this technology of sacred geometry, and these monsters, these idiots, want to open more stargates. Because they get, get more channeling and more technology and more converse with these entities, they gain more power. That's why when you look at the technology and the writings of people like Blavatsky and the Theosophists, you say, these people were like uh, Harry Potter. They're uh, occultists, Kabbalists. Look, the Kabbalists, the Kabbalah of, of Babylonia is simply a use of scalar technologies and sounds to summon, summon uh, astral entities. They're no different than warlocks. Let's call it what it is. They're just warlocks. And they might say it's good, but it's not. What evidence that we're not alone in the universe? Well, there's a real picture of a U.S. Air Force tunneling machine. Now, that's really old technology. The stuff that I talked about with John Fiala, who was good friends with Phil Schneider, the ones now are tunneled at 120 to 140 foot rock face and go 12 to 14 miles per day. They can either make a matrix city or they can make a unidirectional tunnel. And these tunnels uh, literally lay an inner core, the subsidian, and then they put an, uh, an inner core that's locked down with a megalev track in it. They vacuum them out, and these tunnel trains actually are traveling at Mach 2.0 to 2.8 underground between places so they can cross the United States in less than 35 minutes. They connect all the major parts here. They go underneath the oceans. They connect all over the planet. And when Phil was actually going through one of these tunnels with, uh, uh, with uh, John Fiella, some years ago, many years ago, they broke through one of these tunnels. It just turned out that the tunnel they broke through was already cored and built three to 500,000 years ago by another civilization. God knows what kinds of creatures, whether they were inhabitants of Earth or visitors. But our world is a very old world. And the very idea that somehow we're only 6,000 years old is asinine. Uh, human beings... Uh, you know, to believe that we're living in a young universe is absolutely ridiculous. And if you actually look at the genetics, and I'm a scientist, but I also am a spiritual in person. I synthesize two, the two together because I call them the two witnesses. And if your mind, which is sharp as a razor, and your spirit, which is open as, and flies like a dove, if you have the two, you will truly discern the truth, but you need to sharpen both.